Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, I want to say that I'm happy to be here. Um, it's my hometown, first of all, Antwerp. And secondly, because I'm now the vice chancellor or director, the CEO of the university, sport is only a very small part in my uh, duty. You can't hear me? Okay. That's better. <coughs> So, thanks for being here. You have several reasons uh, not to be here. Uh, first of all, it's my speech. Uh, second, <laughs> it's a beautiful uh, city. Anyhow, I'm happy that you're here, and it means that you are very well dedicated to the topic of this conference. It's sport, it's about top sport. And uh, today I will speak about top sport and study. Vela asked me to speak a little bit about our university the reasons why we have this program and which problems that we are facing with or that we face with. So, first of all, my university, the VUB, uh, has always taken the lead in relevant social topics. For instance, we were the first university that have organized student participation in the board of directors. So it means that students are evaluating all professors, but they are also deciding on all programs, on all management decisions of the university. And uh, this has become, in Belgium, an, uh, a decree, so every university has to do this. Second, we had uh, professors that were in prison because they came in the forefront for abortion and also for euthanasia. It's uh, very hot topic nowadays in the newspaper, euthanasia for children, and it's a big debate in our Senate. A fourth thing is uh, IVF. Uh, we didn't got the Nobel Prize for it, it was a professor in uh, the UK, but at our university the technique to employ it for people has been uh, set up, and so it means that we have several 10,000 of children that have been born at our university and our technique is used worldwide uh, and now more than 3 million kids ha are born through the technique that has been developed at our university. And in fact, within two weeks I have to go to Dubai to set up uh, a part of our university over there because they want to use our technique. But in the same context I can say that also in top sport and study, we have always taken the lead as university. And uh, I want to welcome also Paul uh, Willman, who is here. He has a very good uh, career transition model. And I'm not going to speak about this because uh, you all know it, I think. But what I want to stress here is that we at the university, we are dealing with a very important period of every student athlete. And therefore, we said at our university that we should take measurements, that we should take uh, uh, some action so that we can facilitate the combination of sport and study. And it all started with one student. I always say that if you have problems, well, every marathon starts with the first step. And it's the same with this project. One student came to the vice chancellor of the university, Sylvain Lockerfield, at that moment, and together with his father, and he said, well, I get a scholarship at a university in the United States. He was a swimmer, and he asked, why don't I get that scholarship here in my hometown at your university? And so this uh, vice chancellor, the, he asked me to come in his office, and he said, well, here's a problem, and you have to solve it. And uh, we started the system and we got a lot of internal obstruction because one of the reasons was, and because the vice director of education, he was a people coming from, he was a guy coming from the faculty of law, he said every student should be treated equally. And if you're a top level sports student or not, every student has to be treated equally. So we are not going to organize facilities for your top-level sports students. 
So in my office, I have three doors. If they kick me out from one door, I take the other door. And so I said, how can we tackle this vice rector coming from law? Well, we will do it through the legal way. And that's the reason that we went to the Minister of Culture, Patrick Duau, who also was responsible for sport, and we um, motivated him to set up a decree. A decree is a law that is only uh, legislative for the Flemish part of the country, for the region, and he was motivated to follow us. And by doing this, he made a decree that later on was followed for all students. Because if you're now going to a university in Flanders, all students can have a flexible program. They decide themselves how many uh, courses they take, how long they will do uh, about their study. So we got this decree. Later on, we said, well, we don't only want the possibilities to organize it, but we also want scholarships for top sports students. And we went to the ministry, and nowadays, through the sport governmental body in Flanders, Bloso, all the students that are selected to be a top sport level student, well, they get a scholarship. And other universities have duplicated what has been done at our university. So here you see some pictures of uh, two young guys. Oh, sorry, I'm too fast. Two young guys, first with me, uh, when I was uh, to start up this program. And one year later on, I took on board Paul Willeman as a sports psychologist, who is now responsible for this top level sport. Uh, and study program. And uh, in the newspapers it was mentioned that, uh, well, Brussels is ideal for top level students, that uh, we have uh, found out, top sports students, uh, what is in the newspaper is uh, very often wrong. What we did is we set up a system where top sports students could come to the university and not having to choose whether to uh, only go for education or only going for top level sport. I can tell you also a little anecdote. Um, I remember, Paul, that we went to Bath. Bath is a beautiful uh, city in the UK. We were invited there, and the uh, vice chancellor of that university heard of our sport policy plan, and he said, well, I want to set up this also in our university. Could you send me your uh, top level sports uh, policy plan? We did. Everything was calculated in Belgium frame at that moment. So we asked and we got from our university 500,000 Belgian franc. You have to uh, split it by 40 to get to know two euros. But the vice chancellor let translate this policy plan and he just changed Belgian franc in pound sterling. So it means that he got from his board uh, 60 times as much as we uh, got at our university. And that was the start of the top level sport and study program at the University of Bath. So you see, there are smarter persons than uh, myself in other countries. Now, what are the facts and features of uh, our program? In total, we have about 70 elite student athletes on average every academic year. 26 are new elite athletes every academic year. In total, we had already 778 elite student athletes since the start of the program, and most of them are male. 26% uh, are male and 38% are female. The academic success, which is a very important uh, KPI, is uh, academic success, I think. Because students, athletes that come to the university, they want not only to be very successful in their sport career, but they also want to get a degree. And we see that we have, on average, 72% uh, percent academic success, which is high. I can tell you that in the first year, we only have a success rate of all students of 40%. Does this mean that our program is easier for top-level sports students? 
Not at all, it's more flexible, but nowadays every student, as I told you already, can make, can choose for a flexible program. It means, I think, that those students that come to the university, they are very much dedicated to have to set their goals, they want to achieve, they want to have success, and of course, we have also our guidance program that help them in being successful. But it's not easier, and that was one of the elements. Other universities attacked us in the board of all the universities because they said your university is setting up a program that is easier for your top level sports students. They were thinking of what was happening at that time, about 25 years ago in the United States, where they attracted top level student story, uh, sports, men and women, just to have a scholarship for the marketing of the university. And they were not interested in having uh, academic success. Second element, of course, is for athletes, is the athletic success. We had several students that went to the Olympics. You even see here some that got a gold or bronze or a silver medal. And we can say that we are proud of having those students on our list of record. But the VB has also a rich tradition with top sport, not only because of this program, we also have a very good uh, uh, laboratory. It's Blitz, who is responsible for sports medicine, sports physiology, that um, has on the track record the guidance of uh, soccer team, Anderlicht, Lotto cycling team, table tennis athletes, world champion motocross, Stefan Everts, uh, KV Mechler and other um, soccer club, Belgian horse riding delegation to the Olympic Games, uh, Nils Albert Bert balance in uh, cycling. And of course we have splits. I remember that I challenged Vedler. Uh, we came back from the Olympics in uh, Sydney, just as, uh, not as a participant, but we went over there to, to watch the beautiful games over there. We had several athletes on those games and also several people in the management, in the guidance of those athletes. And um, together with Paul, we said, well, we are going to organize a Sydney cocktail. And we invited all the VB representatives at those Olympic Games. And I said to Vela, you can't go home this evening because I will tell you what your PhD topic will be for the next future. You know how she is, always very critical, but when she catches something, she is a, a pit bull terrier, and she went to that cocktail, and that's the reason that you were forced to be here on this Congress, because she has taken the challenge. So with the Spliss project, I was very much surprised, because sport is about competition. And I never found, except in the Netherlands, one study on benchmarking. Benchmarking is very common in all kind of industries, where you look at why is a country or why is another company doing better than we do. But in sport, where competition is a core business, I couldn't find any study about this. So I said, why not setting up a benchmark study on top-level sport? And that was the start. Second element that we have also in tradition with the top sport is two of uh, the PhD uh, students, they set up their own spin-off company. And it's called Double Pass. Double Pass because they are mainly active in soccer and they play a double pass, but also because they even go, I think, always by two to the toilet. They do everything together. Uh, it's a double pass between two people. And they have set up, and I very well know how it started, it was at a great market in Brussels. I was taking a beer with the, the president of the Gymnastic Federation and somebody from uh, our sports uh, administrative department. And because <coughs> I have four children, I wanted this to, set, to send my children to a gymnastics clubs. And I phoned the Gymnastic Federation and I said, can you advise me where I have to send my children? But I want to have qualified teachers, 
I want to have a top level uh, program for one of the girls. For the other, it's more dancing. And for the boy, well, it's uh, a side activity to soccer. And this guy at the Federation, he said, uh, uh, I'm sorry, sir, we can't respond to this. I said, oh, is this not a gymnastic federation then? He said, yes, but your question, how can we respond to this? I said, listen, I was at the airport in Bordeaux. I had some time. I took a book and I could see and read everything about wine, the quality of the wine, how it is produced, what is the price of it. I can go to education. I know the rankings of universities. I can go to a hotel. I know the star system. And you in sport, you don't have it. So those two guys have made a PhD in measuring the quality of youth sport programs. And they started up with gymnastics. It was at that time called Gym Qual, not the best for the Dutch people. Uh, you know what it means, a gymnastic quality. So we changed the name in I, IK Gym, uh, I'm able to gym. But later on, they went to soccer and they are now active in the Premier League, in the Bundesliga, they already got their second contract. They are active in Finland and they are now dealing with uh, Japan, Korea, uh, New York, Saudi Arabia, they are also in Hungary. Uh, so they are working in those countries to measure the quality of youth sport. We even went to our soccer federation and we said, well, you get money from the Champions League. And you're spreading the money through the clubs, but how do you do this? Why not spreading the money related to the quality of the education of the children? And so they are very active in setting up these programs. They are also counseling um, soccer clubs to improve the um, education of the children. Third, we have a sports psychological assistance uh, with Paul Willeman, who's uh, active in Davis Cup, the Fed Cup in tennis, preparation of the Olympic Games. Uh, Kevin van der Perre, who was an um, athlete um, in um, um, ice skating, dancing, and he has set up a cooperation with the INSEP in uh, Paris. We are also having a program for students uh, to realize their career assistance for top-level sports students. It has been taken over nowadays by our sports administrative body. Another element that we are doing, we are providing honorary doctorates. And I can tell you, I said when I became the vice rector of university, well, a vice rector has always the possibility to put somebody in front to get an honorary doctoral degree who is not in science. So, for instance, at our university, we had Nelson Mandela, uh, Gandhi, and other persons. But we have a tradition also in several universities to have people from the cultural tradition. But never worldwide, never uh, has been sportsmen or sportswomen uh, presented to get an honorary degree. So I presented Eddie Merckx. I got a big fault in my university because they said, this is impossible. What has this gentleman done for society? Well, I said, he is more known worldwide than any other people. So I had a big fault at our university, but I succeeded. And I remember that when we had the dinner, we had also photographs over there, and everybody knew Eddie Merckx. But the guy who was successful in science, who made the first artificial sheep, a clowning, I don't know if it's the right word in English, but where you, you duplicate the person, and this sheep, so this was amazing science. Well, nobody knew this person. They said at the dinner, who are you? Oh yeah, and what have you done? And Eddie Merrick's everybody knew. So I did it also for Johan Olaf Koz, who was a medical doctor who is very active in uh, organizing sports and games for uh, children in very difficult areas like uh, uh, in Palestina. And the last doctor, honorary doctor, was uh, Kim Kleisters. And uh, I have already another plan. Uh, one of the colleagues uh, at the other universities, he 
came to me and he said, well, what you're doing, this is really crazy. You're decreasing the honor of such an honorary uh, doctoral degree. I said to him, well, you have given it 15 years ago to a prince who is now the king of Belgium. And I said, so you don't have to give me any lesson. <laughs> Top sport policy plans, we are active also in advising, uh, also in the Netherlands. We have top sport facilities uh, for athletics, soccer, uh, also for gymnasts. Uh, we had the national Argentina rugby team at our university. And on the 11th of October, I'm very proud of this, after 10 years of uh, hard working, I could open a top sport hotel with Congress facilities and modern housing for the, for the Labo Blitz and for the sport physiologists. Um, so we can organize their uh, stays for sports uh, men <coughs> and women. It costs uh, 13 and a half million euros and the VB had not to pay any euro for this. VB has also many top-level sports, men among its uh, students and alumni, but also many coaches and top sport managers. For instance, the head of uh, the Olympic delegation, Edith Smith, who used to be um, a colleague of mine when I was a student. Wim van der Ven, who was uh, responsible for the silver medal of, or the, was it the gold medal, of Tia Helbout in uh, Beijing, and others that have been working also abroad. But, ladies and gentlemen, we still have great plans for top sport. Uh, for we will continue with doing the coaching, also scientific research, the counseling. And I started also up a career center under the construction like a PPP, a private-public partnership, which is not only for top-level sports students, but for all students, and especially for students coming from abroad, so that they will get in-service training, for job training. We're helping the students to um, write a write CV, but I challenge also Paul to send more of his top level sports students to it, because I think that we can help also the top sports students who buy this career center. So in conclusions, uh, Verle, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy, happy as a rector uh, on the last 27 years because we have taken some program to the forefront. Uh, I'm also <coughs> very proud that we are doing it. I think that a university has the core business to develop talent and not to say to uh, young people who, that have two talents that you have to make a selection and that you have to make a choice. I think that university has to develop all the talents of their students. So in this uh, instance, the top level sports student program is an example for other uh, programs. Top level sport is about excellence. Sport is about excellence. Well, universities are also about excellence. Uh, universities are about universitas, about internationalization, about the world. A university that only has Flemish students, Flemish professor, is not a university. Well, in this respect, we are the same as top-level sports students, because top-level sport is about internationalization. I remember, I don't know if there are people from France here, when France uh, became the world champion in soccer, I saw Jean-Marie Le Pen standing in the... Um, uh, in Tribune, how do you say this? Uh, Stage. Stage. Well, he was standing in the stadium and he was very proud about the three colors of France, but no one except one player in this team was a real Frenchman. And in his politics, he was always against those kind of immigration. Well, the same is happening in Belgium. <coughs> Top level sport is more about immigration, it's about intercultural affairs. Uh, it's becoming a global affair. And in fact, I can tell you in this uh, audience, I can, I'm going to ask you one question just to see if you're still awake. Which is the most efficient country in the world for the Olympics? Efficiency for me is not putting too much money in a program and getting the maximum of results. 
Which country is the most efficient in the Olympics ever? Everybody's asleep. GP. Sorry? Britain. Great Britain, no. I'm sorry. Kenya. The Netherlands, no. I'm sorry. Kenya. Kenya. Kenya, no, I'm sorry. I'm all, I'm going to tell you, it's Belgium. No. <laughs> of course, and why? We have selected one athlete for the Nagano Games. It was Bart Felkham, a Dutch guy who wasn't selected by the Dutch. And we have taken him, we made him a Belgium. He went, we didn't have to put any effort in him, and he got, I think, a silver medal or a bronze medal at Nagano. So you see it? Uh, Anyhow, I'm very glad that our university has taken up the challenge to put top sport on front. Secondly, I think that the university always has to foresee what is to come. And what is to come, ladies and gentlemen, the world is becoming one big city. Now we're dealing about Antwerp, about Rotterdam, Amsterdam. Well, within the next future, we will speak about Brussels and Brussels meaning Antwerp, I'm sorry for the Antwerp people over here, Rotterdam, Amsterdam, it will become one big city. And in this big city, uh, I'm just coming back from Brazil, if you look at those big cities, well, I think that uh, the society will be in great need for sport. So also in that respect, I think that we at the university, we have to challenge all students to take enough movement, to take enough sport every day. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm come to the end. My university, the VUB, has always fought on the barricades for social relevant topics, and I guarantee you that we will always continue to do so, at least for the next three years. That's my period as being <laughs> a vice chancellor. I thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for your uh, please uh, stay on the stage for a moment. I have some, uh, some questions, uh, and I have a present for you, first of all. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a squeeze bottle. In Belgium, chocolate, you must, uh, must know it. Thank you. Th thank you. And uh, I have a question. Um, I think it's, it's great to work at a university and have a vice chancellor like you, and uh, with this position of sports in your university. I think uh, for our country, I think many universities are envious of uh, position of sports in the university. Uh, in regards to SPLIS, uh, you moved up from the uh, faculty of uh, sports and physical education up to position of vice chancellor. Why do you think SPLIS is still important for uh, the university, the VUB? The, the well, first of all, I told you that I think that sport is much more important in society than nowadays at universities. So I think that we have to come more to the forefront and show that even in sport, the science is very important. But if you have to compete with, uh, for instance, I have colleagues that are active in CERN in Geneva for finding the Higgs uh, particle, or if you're active in medicine where you can help thousands of people with cancer, so it's very difficult to, to compete. But I think that this kind of program can in can prove the importance of top-level sport, can improve also the uh, importance of sport, and um, by benchmarking, you can show that in other countries, uh, because you say uh, that uh, your universities imply that they don't have a vice chancellor in physical education. Well, first of all, physical education is still not a, uh, a topic at your universities. It's not a university topic in your country, so it starts already there. But what I mean is, um, I think that by comparing, we will see that very much other countries than Belgium, uh, sport is of much more importance than in, uh, in our country. I'm just coming back from Brazil. If I look what is happening over there, um, of course you have the world championships in soccer, you will have the Olympic Games, afterwards you will have the Universiades over there probably. So. And I see also how people are very fond of their, uh, of their body. So I think that by making those kind of studies, you can compare and learn from other countries. But only the, the project for itself, uh, if you go through publication, if you can organize a conference like this, 
you already proved that it's worthwhile to do 